We are on our third wave through my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts. And uh, the first wave was broad sweep, section one, section two, section three. The second wave was going specifically into some of the breakdowns of the what's the content. What is a cult? Section one, section two, overview of the cults. And so we got into who are the Mormons and JWs and Scientologists and Christian Science and all the others. And then in section three, we broke down the six tactics that I discuss in my book about how to share the gospel with them. And so now we're going to go back in phase three. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the most popular of those themes that we've done so far. And I actually cheated a little bit because I went to number three this week before I actually broke them all down properly. But we're going to be breaking those down even more. And so welcome. This is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so that uh, you don't miss any of our future videos related to the cults and how to share the gospel with them. And so, uh, like I said, my, my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, is available on paper, as paperback or Kindle on Amazon.com. If you'd like a special deal, message me, and uh, we can talk about how we can go about arranging that. And so today, uh, we're going to start breaking down this week. We're going to break down my videos related to common characteristic of cults and cult leaders. And uh, so the, the main video was Christopher Namelka, Six Traits of a Cult Leader. And you can go and check that out as well on my channel. And so there's three main things that I wanted to break down this week. And the first one is this, that they claim that the Bible cannot be trusted. This is a hallmark characteristic of cults and cult leaders. And so let's break this down into the different ways that cults do this in some of the specific manifestations and ways that the books, the, the groups that I discuss in the book do this. And so the first way that they get you to not trust the Bible is by talking about a complete and total apostasy of the church in which the true church of Jesus Christ disappeared from the face of the earth for who knows how long, and that the true church needs to be restored. And then, guess what? They are the one true church. And so, obviously, the LDS, the Mormons, do this. This was critical to the entire account of the first vision, the, the, found, the finding of the Book of Mormon, and even the claims within the Book of Mormon that there was a, a total apostasy, that the priesthood authority had vanished from the face of the earth, that malicious scribes had gone in and actually tainted the Bible, and that it was necessary for God to physically show up and then choose one vessel through, by, through whom he was going to start his church again. And that happened to be about 1,800 years after the fact where he had just let people kind of go to their own devices. And of course, that person was Joseph Smith. Scientology has an interesting way of doing this. And their backstory of humanity, uh, which you don't find out until you're well steeped into it. But if you want to go back and watch that video, that is quite a tale. Uh, but part of that story includes... Everyone, all these Thetans, all these souls being gone, going into these, these cinemas, movie theaters, in which they're shown these images that are meant to brainwash them. And part of these images are about God and about Jesus. And it's all part of this myth that we've been told. And uh, so then you go on to Christian science. And Christian science also believed that it was restoring genuine, true Christianity as founded by Jesus. And they believed that it was a scientific um, belief system that would give healing. And so that's where they get their name, you know, Christian science. 
And so they actually, you know, Christians have had it all wrong. That it's not really about like spiritual salvation. It's really about physical salvation. And that everything that we, we see in this world is really just the spirit is good. The physical is bad. And that it's all an illusion. You know, sin is an illusion. Death is an illusion. Sickness is an illusion. And we just have to overcome that and, and realize our own divinity within us. And the Seventh-day Adventists had this way of demeaning the Word of God as well. And they believed that, you know, the church had gone apostate from, you know, the Sabbath keeping. And, you know, that they're the only ones who were keeping the Sabbath and keeping the Ten Commandments and encouraging people to do that. And so they all have this way of believing that they are a restoration of the, the true Christianity. And so that makes the organization the prime authority because the Bible, somewhere along the way, the Bible has been tainted or misunderstood or, you know, we've interpreted it wrong or applied it wrong. The second way that they get you to question the Bible and its trustworthiness is by saying it's not translated correctly. And there's a number of the groups who have done this, who have actually taken the time to create their own translation of the Bible. And one of the projects that I'm going to be working on in the distant future is going to be to take all the verses that we talk about in the Sharing Jesus with the Colts and then actually going to all of these different scriptures and all of these official websites and giving you the from, the, from the, their own mouth and from their own scriptures, what they have done, how they have changed these scriptures, how they have reinterpreted them, reinterpreted them, and how they have redefined them. And so keep an eye on it. It's not going to be coming anytime soon, but you're going to be getting bits and pieces as we keep working our way through, through the book even in more detail. And so you have the Joseph Smith translation in which he literally believes by, by revelation, just with, you know, a Bible in front of him and revelation, he was able to just literally just cross things out and write things in. And part of what he wrote in was himself. In Genesis, uh, during the, the prophecies about the 12 tribes, he actually writes in a specific prophecy that's obviously supposed to lead you to believe it's about Joseph Smith. And so that's just a sampling. And if you want to know what this is like, looks like, really, you can go to the Church History Museum across the street from Temple Square in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there you can see, under glass, you can see, it was not the Bible he was using, but you can see an example of what that would look like and just how arrogant that was of him to claim that he was the one. And not all the Greek scholars looking at all the original manuscripts and comparing them and doing textual criticism. No, Joseph Smith knows by revelation what is supposed to be in God's word. Now, the, the funny thing about that is there are some ver verses that he changed that can actually be used to help them to understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, so that's another video for another day. The New World Translation, it was put out by the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they claim on their website, I saw as an article as I was doing research for this, where they claim that scholars have said that the deviations that, you know, evangelical Christians have uh, said were intentional variations so that to, to pitch their own agenda and their own theological beliefs, that they were all, in many cases, um, just an example of why the, the New World Translation was superior as a translation to all of the others. And I just thought that that was comical and had to laugh because they violate just very strict rules of the Greek. And I noticed that they didn't say that all of them were. And so, yes, some of them, they may have found a little bit slightly better way to translate it. Each translation builds off of another. But when you have John 1, 1 saying that Jesus was a God, that is completely not even possible in the Greek from the construction and is completely a theological train wreck, whether you're caught coming from a Christian background or you're coming from a Jehovah's Witness background. And I have a, ver I have a video that's teaching the Trinity 
to Jehovah's Witnesses, and you can go and check that out as well, where we go over some of those verses that they failed to uh, fix and, and, and really make a cohesive worldview. Then you have the Clear Word Bible. This is admitted as a paraphrase on the Seventh Day Adventist website. I actually found the, an article where they didn't, they were actually admitting that it's a paraphrase and that paraphrases aren't the best uh, translation to use as your normal reading of Scripture. But yet the Clear Word Bible is advocated by two Seventh-day Adventists as reflecting the real message and the real truth of God. And then you have the Passion Translation, and that is put out by the New Apostolic Reformation. And I believe his name is Brian Johnson, if I remember correctly. He felt a calling to create a translation that accurately catches the fiery tone of the Scripture and the, the passion and the, and the excitement. And in the meantime, he also conveniently threw in there, um, because it's also a paraphrase, he also conveniently threw in there their belief and justification for their belief in modern day apostles and prophets that have the same authority as the apostles and the prophets that you read about in the Old and New Testaments. And so that is the second way that they get you to not trust the Bible. The third way is this modern day revelation and that is going to be tomorrow's video and so stay tuned for that and then the fourth way is this not interpreted correctly they would say it's not that you know the bible has been corrupted or that it needs to be retranslated it's that that it hasn't been interpreted correctly and so for the mormons they would say that we've misunderstood verses that clearly talk about a pre-existence or baptism for the dead or men becoming gods. For the Jehovah's Witnesses, that Jesus is a God or only Yahweh is almighty God. For uh, the Christian science, the redefining of terms, they have a, that's what science in health with key to the scriptures is. It is redefining how you should read biblical terms. And if you apply those terms, that glossary um, from Science and Health with Key of the Scriptures to the Bible, it makes the Bible completely unreadable and illegible, which makes you dependent upon Mary Baker Eddy and her book to be the key scriptures that you would go off of. And so then you have, are you a disciple? And this is the International Church of Christ. They take a word that we're familiar with and they'll ask a question, are you a Christian or are you a disciple? As if they were two separate things. They're not two separate things. They're the same thing. They're, they're synonyms that describe the exact same thing. Somebody who believes and have tried, believes in Jesus Christ that he's died for their sins and rose again from the dead and they've trusted their salvation completely and solely into his hands. And they have been given eternal life. That is what a Christian is. And that's what a disciple is. They're one and the same. But they ask this question to put you on the track of dependence upon them. Then you have the Sabbath from the Seventh-day Adventist as the emphasis, as the way of bringing you back in captive to Old Testament law, which Christ has redeemed us from, and it's just like the Judaizers in the New Testament who are trying to get the Gentiles to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. And then you have the sell all you have of the Twelve Tribes Movement, taking a few verses out of context to try and convince people that they should sell all their possessions, give all of their money to the 12 tribes, and that they should move into one of their communities and live this selfless life in community with the rest of them. And that's exactly what Christianity is. And then you have the foundation of the apostles and the prophets in covering theology from the New Apostolic Reformation, getting people to submit to their modern-day apostles and prophets and teaching them that if they step outside of that covering, that they're going to fall into the judgment of God. And uh, then you have God is one and only one, and his name is Jesus. And that is, of course, the United Pentecostal Church International and the Oneness Pentecostals as a whole. 
And so all of these ways of saying that you have all along misinterpreted the Bible. And because you have done that, and, and the Bible can only be properly interpreted by a select few, those who have called, those who've been anointed, those who've been entrusted. And any church who you see any of these signs of, run. And so you may be in a Christian church and your leaders are doing some of these same things or expressing some of these same mindsets. And if they are, run as fast as you can and get out of there. And so I hope that I've answered your questions. If you have any questions that I have not answered, go ahead and put those in the comments down below. And if you have any insights or experience in anything that I've talked about, please share with the rest of us. I'll be taking some of that and using it for next week's Q&A at the end of the week. And until next time, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, give a thumbs up if you like the content for today, share this video with others in your life who want to share the gospel with people caught in religion. And uh, until next time, may God's grace be, next, be with you.